Hi everyone, welcome to today's webinar. This is the first in a series that we're doing looking at uh, the COVID-19 pandemic and how that's changed the way that uh, lots and lots of businesses are operating and how their employees are working. My name is Rebecca Bailey and I'm joined by my colleague Fahim Afghan. Today we're going to be addressing the topic of sharing large files while working remotely. Yeah, good day everyone. Uh, Fahim Afghan here. So we're going to look at this in, in three sections. It, it won't be too long a session. So first of all, Bex is going to talk about the, the challenges we, we're facing right now in this new norm. I'll then share a couple of ideas on how we can approach um, the sharing of large files in the new and current environment before then taking some questions that we've been receiving over the past couple of weeks that we'll look to address at the end. Brilliant. Thanks, Fahim. So what's going on right now? Well, we're currently living in a new reality. Approximately one quarter of the global population is currently being told to stay at home to stop the spread of COVID-19 and coronavirus. And it's fair to say that many business continuity plans have struggled to accommodate such a sudden and large scale change to moving as many staff as possible to working remotely. At Egress, we've heard from and about many businesses that are currently battling with the need to get some or all staff set up to work from their homes, um, maybe via VPN access, or they're struggling to issue enough devices such as laptops for their staff to work on. And we're in a crunch time for productivity. People still need to work, they still need to get their jobs done. The Egress team has spoken to law firms, state level government organizations, regulatory bodies that rely on paper-based processes or physical media to share files. And suddenly they're unable to do this. Or in some cases, they don't have enough laptops for everyone. So in the interim, people are working on mobile devices, many of which are personal, and they're sending and receiving large files from these devices. There's often concern for organisations when their staff work remotely anyway, but let alone at this scale. And when productivity feels threatened, we often see that security can take a back seat. So where you're in a situation that people want to send large files to colleagues or third parties, if they're too large for email, these individuals will often turn to another mechanism. And we end up with a rise in shadow IT where organizations can lose control over the data being shared and they're not able to track it, recall it, monitor how it's being used by recipients, etc. And whilst it's initially seen as a productivity saver, it's likely also that this patchwork approach will ultimately slow people down because they don't have a central location to find things or version control to revert back to. So against this backdrop, how can egress help? Well, Fahim is going to dig a little deeper into this for us today. Thanks, Bex. Yeah, just, just following on from your intro, as, as you say, I think the conversations we've been having with customers over the past couple of weeks there are certainly two key concerns that have become even more explicit. Number one, of course, remains security. And the second is what you were just referring to there is, is the impact all of this is having on productivity. You know, a lot of the conversations we've had, companies are, are talking about how they're, they're striving to, to minimize any delay or, or disruption to what are, of course, time critical needs and, and objectives. So it's really around these two pillars that I'd like to frame the next couple of slides, if I may. So there are a number of approaches that we're, we're taking with customers right now to help them share large files in a, in a more seamless way. And there are probably three in particular that, that I'd like to, to outline today. And, and the first scenario focuses on what I'm sure everyone listening to this right now is experiencing. You, you might be working on a large file with, with sensitive data. Maybe it's a a hefty slide deck for a, for a board or big investor meeting separately might be a, a CAD drawing of some sort. And of course you, you need feedback or, or edits from a, from a colleague or, or third party. So you need to be able to share that file securely. So secure workspace is uh, an encrypted and, and also accredited environment for online collaboration and, and file sharing. Uh, and it's used by government agencies, healthcare players, um, financial service enterprises as well. And they use it to share, but, but most importantly, protect large and, and sensitive files because number one, it's, it's very simple. So for example, there, there are no limits on, on file size. There's an easy drag and drop. And that makes adding large files um, very, 
easy for users. So just taking a look at this slide there, there are also enterprise grade controls and permissions when sharing that content. So for example, limited periods of, of time for, for accessing files may be viewable only from a certain location. Excuse me, users can also restrict editing, uh, forwarding and, and, and downloading uh, rights as well. And, and what this means for them is that they can more effectively control the data they share and in turn minimize the risk of exposing any of that sensitive data. Excuse me, though, like we said at the start, you know, productivity is just as critical for teams right now who are, of course, completely separated and very much remote uh, right now. So I was actually chatting with a customer in the financial services space uh, a couple of days ago about how her team is using Secure Workspace uh, right now. And, and a big project they'd been working on um, recently is, is preparing a whole bunch of materials for what is basically a, an internal conference or, or event of, of sorts, which as you can imagine, they're, they're going to be running virtually. But um, you know they've been preparing a number of presentations, as you can imagine, many of which containing high spec visuals, videos, and that's of course adding up to the, the file size. Um, so whereas before the team members would, would gather in a, a meeting room in the office, they'd run through the materials, make edits and, and, and so forth. Now, clearly that cannot happen. So what they're, they're now doing is, is getting together on workspace and co-editing documents in real time using our online editor. Uh, and that's great because it means that they're not experiencing any disruption to their workflows. And as she was telling me, they'll have everything ready in time still for the virtual event. So there's real power in this feature. And, and what's also really helpful is that um, there's an egress online editor as well. So for those who don't license Office 365, they can still get to work seamlessly and, and avoid any disruptions to their, their existing productivity. And I, I should also mention that um, all changes are, are saved and tracked. So users can easily revert to the previous versions if need be. So that's the first approach. The second scenario I just want to quickly go through and, and get people thinking about is if a big part of what they do is collecting significant amounts of data, maybe from third parties, so maybe customers or, or applicants or other kinds of, of external parties. So I'll give you an example. So one of our colleagues was telling me a, about a conversation she'd had with a law firm who, who specialize in, in conveyancing. So they do, they're doing a lot of uh, work when it comes to facilitating property sales and purchases, remortgaging, so on and so forth. And what they were saying was that they're collecting so much PII in the form of signed documents from, from applicants or, or, or sellers and, and buyers of properties. And that, of course, contains addresses, contact details, bank details, scans of passports, of course. But as a matter of policy, much of that sensitive data is being manually sent into their office. But of course, there's, there's no one in the office right now to collect and importantly, take action on that data, which is causing huge delays to the process, it's, it's putting these property purchases and, and mortgage applications at significant risk, not to mention it's testing the patience of their customers as well because it's reflecting badly on them as an organization. And that's why I really wanted to, to mention Secure Web Form here, which essentially is a, a secure channel for third parties to share sensitive, excuse me, sensitive data with organizations. That of course includes um, large files here because first of all there's again real simplicity to it so it's quick and easy uh, and users can upload files from any device that they use um, they also don't need to waste time creating accounts or anything like that while I should also point out that um, forms are fully customizable and, and can be tailored to an organization's brand which means third parties can feel that sense of assurance and an authenticity when, when sharing sensitive data with an organization. And, and from a security point of view, all files are protected in transit and at rest to remove that risk of maybe malicious interception or compromise, while antivirus checks are also run on every uploaded file, and this time to protect the organization's network. So again, security and productivity really going hand in, in hand. And then finally, the last scenario I just want to touch upon is, is with email. Now, clearly, 
we're all using email a lot more while we're, we're home-based. However, as I'm sure we all know, standard mail clients, they set a default um, file size limit of maybe what, 10 megabytes, maybe just a little bit more. So that becomes a problem if we're sending over that limit, either as one big attachment or, or a number of, of files. And this is a conversation we have with our community every day. In fact, one of our, our customers in the private healthcare space was telling us recently that their employees response to this hurdle would include either using free online transfer websites or, or mechanisms, which although convenient, of course, present significant security concerns when it comes to highly sensitive content. Employees were even resorting to chopping up attachments into smaller chunks and, and sending those over a multitude of emails just to keep within the, the file size limit. And, and that's just not efficient, right? You know, that, that's time that employees could, could spend on far more important or, or urgent initiatives. So, so what they now do is, is use the large file transfer functionality within Egress Protect because what it allows them to do is, is securely and seamlessly send sensitive large files via email. And just to take a look at, at what that really looks like. So firstly, it's, it's all part of the Outlook add-in. So it runs really without getting in the way of what the employee is doing. There's an easy drag and drop experience to add large files. Uh, users then select a, um, from a choice of customizable uh, classification options to appropriately encrypt uh, files and importantly, attachment file size totals go far beyond the default uh, limit in the mail client. So what this all means is that number one, users no longer feel the need to rely on those free, perhaps less secure alternatives. And, and secondly, productivity is preserved as we're completely removing all that time that's wasted on cutting up attachments into smaller chunks and sending that over a series of emails. It's all done in, in, in one swoop. So those are some of the key ways in which we're working with our community to share large files in the new environment. But like we said at the start, Bex, uh, I'll pause there because we have had questions on this topic coming from um, prospects and customers alike. So maybe we can spend some time addressing those. Amazing. Thank you so much, Fahim. Um, so yes, like you say, we've got a few um, FAQs uh, to highlight at the end of this session. Um, and the first one is, uh, could you explain a little bit more about how data is protected in secure workspace, please? Sure. So um, there are a number of ways. As we say, you know, security is one of the two cornerstones, if you like, if, if of secure workspace. So right off the bat, you know, as, as we mentioned in, in the, one of the slides there, antivirus checks are run on all files that are uploaded, all content that's uploaded to secure workspace, number one, to secure and protect the, the, the network's organization. Um, data is also uh, protected in transit and at rest using AES 256-bit encryption. Uh, we're also industry and government accredited, so ISO 27001 um, accredited, a lot of government frameworks also accredited and certified as well and we also have a granular set of enterprise grade permissions and controls like we mentioned in terms of um, download um, editing rights um, sharing rights time expiry location access all that to allow users to better control the data and protect it and keep it more secure Wonderful. Thank you for that summary. Um, and another question that we often get asked is what are the restrictions that we can put around files that are uploaded into Workspace? For example, can we restrict by uh, file type? Yes, we can in, in, a, in a short answer. Um, it's not a default setting, but it is entirely customizable. So any, any uh, administrator can, can make, can turn that, that switch on so to speak. So, for example, if, if they only want PDFs, we can do that. If it's MP4s you want to restrict, for example, we can do that as well. So, to answer the question, yes, we can restrict certain types of files. Wonderful, thank you. And now looking at the recipient experience, um, so the people receiving the files, um, do they need to create an account to access the information stored in Secure Workspace? Good question. Uh, the simple answer is no, because I think from our point of view and based on a lot of our conversations with customers, we're very keen to remove as much friction as possible 
from the process. So, you know, the recipient might be a, a customer or a critical partner and, you know, overly, uh, over too much, too many layers in the process might reflect badly on that organization, right? So we want to make sure we, we remove the need to create accounts. Brilliant. Thanks, Fahim. Um, so my next question looks at the experience for recipients. So those people that we're sharing the files with. Um, and do they need to create an account to access the information shared with them? Very good question. Uh, yes and no is the answer to that question. I'll, I'll talk you through it. So, for example, if I'm sharing a sensitive large file with an external user, that user will receive an email notification uh, with a link. And that link will send them to a form to complete a very quick uh, process to create an account, at which point they can then access that content. But of course, as sent by the permissions and controls that, that, that I've I've granted, but it doesn't need to be like that. You know, we're, we're looking at um, ways in which to remove even more friction from the process. So we're introducing ways of more seamless access, which will negate the need for trusted users to um, access content without needing to authenticate in any way and that's something we hope to talk about actually in the coming weeks so watch this space uh, on that front. Great thank you Fahim and exciting to hear about what's coming in Secure Workspace. Um, so I have one final question um, for you and that kind of revolves around the security angle again. Um, what's included in the auditing and reporting that's available via Secure Workspace? Absolutely. So as you can imagine, we, we log all the essential activity. So it might be when files have been opened, uh, who buy, who's edited them, who's shared and, and forwarded, uh, the location of access in terms of an IP address, downloads as well. So a real granular chain of, of custody. And, and, and why is that important, right? So number one, it, it allows us to, to demonstrate compliance um, with a surge in data privacy laws and secondly should the worst happen in, in the event of a breach and, and regulators may be knocking on our doors we can then produce evidence that maybe reduces the the subsequent penalties and fines that we may receive so for example with GDPR and, and CCPA um, a data breach resulting from content that has been encrypted therefore st steps have been taken to protect that data um, that's a mitigating factor when it comes to imposing fines and penalties. So real value there in terms of the auditing and logging that Workspace does in terms of preventing uh, maximum fines and penalties for, for breaches. Great, thank you. Um, well, that's all that we have time for today. Uh, but um, for those of you listening, if you have any other questions um, about Secure Workspace or any of the security products um, that Egress offers, there are a range of options to get on touch on your screens right now. And if you visit egress.com, um, you can submit contact us forms as well. Um, so do please get in touch. The Egress team would love to talk to you.